to highlight when to apply a kidney loop filtration specifically for your tank. Um, we're going to talk about selecting the right filter for your application based on your flow rate, your volume, your viscosity, and specifically how to remove dirt, water, and, and wear metals from your, from your lubricants and your fuels. Typically in the hydraulic world, uh, they use the rule of seven, which means you have to take a volume of fluid and flip it seven times in order to clean it up with the right, with the right pump, the right filter, the right tools. When you change that equation to solve it for a time, basically we can figure out this is a 600 gallon fuel tank. It's half full, so there's 300 gallons of diesel in it. If we use a 15 gallon a minute cart, it's going to take just over, uh, just under two and a half hours to to clean this tank up. We took samples of the, of the tank before we started the kidney loop of the, the top level, the mid level, and, and the tank bottoms, and then each visually inspected those, those bottles and they were all clear and bright. We didn't see a bunch of debris floating around and we didn't see any water in the, in the, in the tank. Um, we took patch tests of those fuel samples, so we put them onto a, a filter patch and then evaluated under a microscope. This is about 125 times magnification, and you can see there's a lot of debris in there. That green line on this patch represents about 100 microns in diameter. And so it's a lot of the very fine debris, uh, four to, to six micron particles in size on these patches that do the most damage to injectors. And we have a bunch of videos on our website that, that go through that in, in particular. Now, this tank was located in Minnesota, and we have uh, biodiesel, and we believe that a lot of this contamination is hard to evaluate specifically, but we believe that a lot of these light brown spots you're seeing in the tank bottoms are actually soft contaminant glycerin from the biodiesel. And again, we have a video specifically on that. So, after three hours of, of kidney looping this, we went from the image on the, on the left, which is an ISO code of a 22, 21, 18, to a ISO code on the right, 15, 14, 12. Overall, it's about a 64 times Im improvement, 64 times cleaner from the left image to the right image, and you can, you can visually kind of see the improvement. So here's a different uh, application where this customer had uh, four 20,000 gallon tanks, and if the tanks weren't completely full, they had about 30,000 gallons of, of diesel on site. And again, you're, you can see by the math that, that that's just not really functional to, to kidney loop that. Even if you increase the, the flow rate on the pump from 15 gallons a minute to 150 gallon per minute, 23 hours is not um, achievable from a kidney loop standpoint. Typically, when I get above five or seven hours, um, of, of kidney loop time, that usually throws up a red flag to me that says, hey, a kidney loop might not be the best solution or we are going to definitely have to look at the, the flow rate uh, going through that filter. So in this application, what we did instead is, is we applied Clean Protect Polish. So we, we filtered the diesel before it came on site through a single pass filter manifold that can handle the delivery flow rate. We applied trap breathers to the top of the tank. And we also applied a dry air system, which I'll explain in the next couple slides. And then we filtered out any of the debris uh, before it actually went into the equipment. And so it took a while uh, to actually clean up these tanks, but um, you know the end result is that these filters, once once this solution is incorporated and your tanks are clean, uh, these outlet filters don't plug very very often. So if we go back to that 600 gallon tank, that's half full of fuel, we apply our 15 gallon minute solution and part of the solution is, is where are you gonna select the pickup and return to the tank and what you're trying to develop is turbulent flow. So if you kind of look at the image here on the left, we put the suction side down at the bottom of the tank and, and the discharge side at the top of the tank, which is kind of the best we could do in this scenario. And again, with this wonderful uh, depiction here, we're trying to create some turbulent flow, trying to move the dirt out of that tank and get it to the filter. And this filter is, is two filters in series. The first filter captures dirt and the second filter captures any free water. And then everything coming out of there is clean and dry. Again, same depiction, we're trying to get that turbulent flow, but the same 
kind of rules applies to our dry air system. This is a membrane air dryer, so you have 100 PSI incoming uh, compressed air here, and you get very low flow of very clean and dry air coming out of here, and that purges over your tank. So if you have some, some dissolved water in your fuel and some, and some moisture in your, in your air above your fuel, we drop purge dry air, and that moisture is going to actually push it out the trap breather. And this trap breather does, does three micron particle filtration and water removal, so the water's not going to come back in. And then we continuously purge, purge dry air over that tank, and the, and the dissolved water that's in the fuel is actually going to come up to the air interface and push it out the tank, just like you saw in the last animation. Now, the only time this doesn't work is if you have one or two inches of water at the bottom of the tank, it's pretty hard for that, that water that's all, are already fallen out of the fuel to dissolve back into the diesel and then go out of the tank. So part of uh, applying a kidney loop is using the right tools. So when we apply kidney loop or we sell filter systems, um, we like to use positive displacement pumps typically gear or vein pumps that apply a solid even flow rate, that gives us the best filtration efficiency. What you're looking at here is a rear wheel filtration, which we'll talk about later in the, in the slides, but it's the same sort of solution if you're going to be filtering uh, hydraulic on equipment, uh, transmission fluid, uh, you use it kind of the same process. Here's that 15 gallon minute cart that you saw before. But, you know, it's always important to know that what kind of fluid you're going to be filtering. If it's a, a specialty fluid, a, a, a non-flammable hydraulic fluid, or a diesel fuel, you know, your pump should be compatible, and the seals in those pumps should be compatible with the fluid that you're using. Now, this, this pump here, this is a 120-volt um, alternating current pump, which means you plug it into an outlet. And it's a constant duty cycle, meaning you can you can keep running it. We have two other versions that are both battery, 12 volt and 24 volt units, uh, direct current. Now those are really portable. Uh, you don't you can use them in the field in a in a pickup tank without it, that that was gravity fed and get really clean fuel to your equipment. But those uh, 12 and 24 volt units are only 30 minute operational. So if you were going to select a filter cart for a kidney loop application, you actually want to be able to, uh, to continuously run it. Many of the Donaldson heads have electrical indicator ports, and that's our depicted there. Typically, they come with a plug, but if you wanted to, you could wire some a light that turns from, from green to red when the filter's plugged, for instance. Otherwise, it's also a test port that gets you before or after the filter. So before the filter would give you an idea of how clean the reservoir is, and, and where you're getting to, and after the filter would give you an idea of filtration performance. And then, like we talked about here, series filtration, particle filtration followed by water absorption, that's a, a single head. When you have parallel filtration, like this dual head here, the flow is actually being split amongst both filters evenly at the same time, so you always want to use the same part number on a dual head like this. Uh, we weren't really, uh, don't have the time to get into ISO cleanliness codes specifically, but we have other videos that do that on our website, My Clean Diesel. Uh, but needless to say, it's a three-digit number that tells you how clean or how dirty it is. The lower the, the number, the, the cleaner the, the fluid. And really what it comes down to is the higher the pressure in the circuit, so high-pressure common rail injectors injecting fuel at 30,000 PSI plus, uh, that circuit needs to be cleaner than, than your engine oil circuit. So we basically say that the, the most important circuits uh, or, or the circuits that provide the, the fastest return on investment are your fuel and your hydraulics, and then so focus on those two first. Really what's happening inside the metal components is that the space between metal components is much smaller, and thus the pressure is higher and the fluid needs to be cleaner. So Donaldson has a variety of filters to choose from. Uh, the ones that we're focusing on this WebEx are our are, are single, uh, single pass clean solutions filters. And, and one of the, the kind of the neat things about here is that we actually tell you what target downstream cleanliness you're going to get with which filter. So we have a couple of filters for fuel, 
We got a couple of filters for transmission hydraulic. We got one filter for um, engine and gear oil, and we got one filter for water absorbing filters for water absorbing. So we just make it really simple. What we're looking at here is a viscosity chart for lubricants and fuels. On the left-hand side, you have your temperature in both Celsius and Fahrenheit. On the, on the top, you have your lubricant. So, uh, for example, if you take an uh, ISO 32 hydraulic fluid, they call it ISO 32 hydraulic fluid because at 40 degrees Celsius, it's 32 centistoke. And that's the viscosity, that's a unit of viscosity. So if we're looking at, at, at lubricants that are greater than 3,000 centisoke viscosity, typically those are too thick to filter. So we wanna warm those, those, those lubricants up before we apply filtration. Between you know, 300 and, and 1,700 centisoke viscosity, we like to use our heavy oil filter, which will get an ISO target of 18, 16, 13, and that's the part number, DBB8664. We sell a, a high viscosity cart that maxes out about 1,700 centistoke with four filters all plumbed in parallel. Next, between 100 and, and 300 centistoke viscosity, we would recommend a light oil filter, which would produce an ISO code of a 161411 downstream. There's two part numbers. Uh, this is actually our, our light oil filter, and this is actually our winter fuel filter. There's an example of our, our, our hydraulic cart, and it's got a, a white suction strainer, and then it goes in, in series filtration with particle, particle filtration followed by water absorption, and that maxes out about 100 centistoke viscosity. And then anything thinner than that, you can use a light oil filter or our all fuels filter, and you can see the ISO cleanliness code that we will get downstream of that filter on the DBB8666. So, you know, it's important to know too when you're in over your head, uh, a kidney loop can't solve all problems. Uh, this is a inside of a fuel tank, um, and, and that's gum sediments and deposits that are, that are um, are lining the wall. There's also, you can't really see it, but there was also a bunch of water in here and microbial growth. And, and that stuff is so insoluble in the diesel fuel that would, it would rather stick to the walls and start creeping up the sides of the walls than actually be in the diesel fuel. So a kidney loop um, really has to be aggressive to, in order to get this stuff off the walls in the first place. So we recommend calling a professional and having them come and clean out, clean out your tanks uh, really thoroughly. Some of our distributors have applied um, pre-filtration. In this case, it's a bag filter, which is pretty affordable filtration to kind of, um, say this was a 10,000 gallon tank, you would kind of run it down to where you only had about 1,000 gallons of fuel left in it. Uh, you would try and save what you could save and the rest you would, you would basically um, try and throw away. You might put this uh, dirty contaminated fuel through this bag filter until you stop plugging bag filters and then you would use the blue cans and then you would return it back to the tank knowing that it was clean and dry once your tank was clean. Um, when it's on engine and you have really gross contamination, it can look as bad as this. So transitioning from fuel to lube, this is an on-engine on lube filter, typically between 30 and 50 PSI working pressure, uh, and that means the particles that we really care about are between 20 and 50 microns in size. That's why we target an ISO code of an 18-16-13. And typically, that's about a 15 times cleanliness improvement than what's being delivered currently to your, to your equipment. A lot of our competitors have some um, marketing sort of gimmicks to, to kind of highlight their technology. You might have seen that stack disc sort of filters. Uh, what Donaldson does is we just apply really premium filtration with our Donaldson media that allows for low pressure drop, which equals we can, we can filter tighter particles and we can, our filters will last longer because of the technology. So you can see here some of our marketing brochures, comparison on some high engine platforms where, where we can be up to 10 times more efficient than our competitors with the same spin on filter. So taking that from engine to hydraulic, hydraulic circuits are, are much higher in pressure. Uh, two to 7,000 PSI are typical. 
which means the particles that do the most damage in those circuits are 4 to 10 microns in size. Uh, we call that an ISO 161411 target, and on average that's 62 times cleaner than what's delivered to your hydraulic circuit. Here's the typical hydraulic circuit. So in itself, it's a kidney loop. Just like the engine oil, it goes round and round and round. Now, there's typically six opportunities to filter, um, and most customers do between one and three um, with the breather and the high pressure and the return line being the most common. If we're only gonna install one filter, typically we would choose the high pressure circuit. Uh, and the reason is, is if you have pump failure, this filter is gonna protect any of that debris from the pump getting it to your really expensive control or servo valves. So again, it's a circuit. There's a lot of tools you can implement to remove dirt, wear metals, and water from every part in the circuit. And then we have different auxiliary applications. This is a, a rear wheel filtration cart, which we'll talk about in the next slides. Here's some hydraulic filter carts that our distributors have put in together. And this one's really neat where um, it actually has a pressure transducer to, um, it doesn't require any, any pumping pressure or any power, and it just takes, diverts one to three gallon per hour of the flow through this filter and then pushes it back into the circuit, which is pretty neat. So offline rear wheel, here's a, kind of an example, um, a, like a $4 million haul truck that a mining operation would use. Um, the, the rear wheels on that haul truck are electric, electrically driven, typically made by General Electric, and the rebuild cost on those is between a quarter and, and three quarters of a million dollars, and the total useful life is about 24,000 hours per GE. Um, our customers were testing the oil every 500 hours and found that the oil didn't meet the recommendation, so they were dropping it at a cost of about $2,500 per oil change. And so with uh, the addition of a kidney loop at the shop, they were able to extend the drain interval um, on average four and up to eight times the, 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 the duration of time. So, you know, uh, 2,500 hours, uh, from 500 to 2,500 hours. In these rear wheels, there are magnetic plugs that just like your transmission pan in your, in your car has a magnetic plug, uh, but these were severely contaminated. So we were seeing ISO codes in the 300 plus part per million range. And after our kidney loop, we were able to drop the ISO cleanliness code by five numbers. Uh, and via the Noria life extension table, that offered us a 1.7 life extension. And we were able to prove that where that 25,000 hour rebuild schedule was making all the way out to, to 40,000 hours. So, and we were dropping ice, uh, iron counts from, from 250 part per million down to 50 part per million. Uh, 